Hi and welcome again. Welcome to my five cent. And today video is will be about the third episode of financial planning. Before I get started, if you are broke or having hard time to save up, please, please, please do something about it. I already have a video on how to stop being broke and the link is down in the description below. And for those already managed to save up, it's high time for you to manage those money. Put those money to work for you even when you are sleeping. Let's jump straight into the three major types of saving. So, number one, account is emergency. And no, it's not for your sudden urge of high tea or coffee, gadget or clothing. Emergency savings are meant to tank an unforeseen, unexpected event such as retrenchment, car repair, home and appliances repair. Most of us probably does not even have the money to cover sudden expenses like that, especially with the growing mindset of YOLO and with the economy growing unstable, lay off around the world, and retrenchment here and there. Don't take your job and money for granted. And you might probably asking how much does emergency fund should have? Personally, I would say a minimum of three months, better yet six months of spare cash that able to thank your fixed expenses like water, electricity, food, loan, mortgage, and so on. And where should you put the emergency fund? Keep in mind that the fund must be really readily and easily accessible, so you cannot use it in investment, but this does not mean that you can't earn interest from it. Just search for any high yield saving account. Don't put in normal saving account which earn you less than a penny. Although some high yield saving account require ridiculous terms and conditions, look for those where the terms and conditions are easily achieved by you. As for me, I am from Malaysia and I am using RHB bonus saver which earn me around 2.65% of interest. The second type of account is retirement or investment. I believe most of us already, already got retirement account or fund as many countries implemented an optional or an obligation to contribute certain amount of percent of our salary towards it. For my country is called EPF, Employee Provident Fund, which require employer 30% and employee 11% of our salaries. And of course, myself even self-contributed. And I do encourage fellow Malaysian to self-contribute as well. And as far as I know, in the US, you guys can opt for 401k, Roth, or the IRA. Some, or at least in my country, it is guaranteed by the government and EPF perform well above the inflation rate of Malaysia. So why do I recommend investment saving? One, for us Malaysian, we can only withdraw our EPF saving at the age of 50 or 55, partially or fully with terms and conditions apply. Or we can opt for full withdrawal at the age of 60. So if we equip with knowledge, it is not impossible to achieve higher rate than what 
EPF can offer. Number three, personal, also known as the entertainment account. This account will definitely put a smile, a big smile on your face. This account will be exclusively for you, meaning this is for your hobbies and entertainment for you. Once a while, we need to let off the steam. Otherwise, you will get exhausted very fast and eventually fed up real quick. Just reward yourself, pamper yourself once a while. Look into the mirror and say, you did a good job. Road to financial freedom is, it is not easy. It takes time, logical thinking, and remember, investing is forever. Okay, so guys, subscribe and like this video so that YouTube algorithm will pick it up. Thank you.